So what's the deal? Is choline associated with cancer or is it not? And so that question comes up all the time. Somebody be, has even put a comment every so often on, oh, choline's associated with prostate cancer. It was a poorly done study. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm also gonna tell you about subsequent studies that are done that totally refute it from different countries and a little cardiovascular as well. So to make you feel comfortable with the value of choline, I think it's inane, I think it's actually pretty dangerous to say something like that. But anyways, time to get into it so you know. Here we're, here's what we're looking at. This is a study back in 2012 that it was over, um, and I'll go into the details. It was from one department, the Department of Public Health at Harvard, and it was authored by William Willett, who is a very plant based pro bias. That is, he's associated with Loma Linda University as well, which is, an, it, which is the Seventh-day Adventist, all very pro plant-based nutrition, very anti-animal based nutrition. So one department, one person and his team, whereas these other two are from two different countries and a whole consortium of both universities and hospitals and researchers. So we're going to get to it. Uh, first of all, you need to know what the claim was. It is choline intake and the risk, risk of lethal prostate cancer incidence and survival. It's a mouthful. I'm not going to get through all of this. So what they did is there's roughly 50,000 men tracked for 22 years, and they go and visit 4,200 of these men. And every six years, every four years, they go in and give them a, an assessment form. They fill out an assessment form. So about every four years in the course of 22 years, which means six visits overall, they said, could you fill this out? And we need to know what you're eating. So at the end of that particular time of the 22 years, those who died, they go, what, what were they eating? You know, do we have any correlations for those who died and those who didn't die? And um, there's a lot of saying, hey, well, it could have been better. It was meaning when they talk about the study, what that they should have done or could have done. It was just basically uh, one race of people. It was... Uh, white businessmen. How is that for a category? And uh, so that's how that was. So it's a pretty low level. It wasn't very scientific. It wasn't measuring um, certain things that are associated with choline. And that's what it was. So it's a pretty, what they call nutritional epidemiology. It's a very weak way of talking about a risk factor. So now let's go to more current, these other two. Uh, choline, betaine consumption lowers cancer risk a meta-analysis of epidemiological studies. So it says just the opposite. It says choline and beta -ene, which is a metabolite of choline, which is necessary for our methylation and our metabolism, hence metabolite. And so they studied all of the studies that were out there. So what this was, this was looking at all the studies and how they did it, all the data, putting it together in one massive database and saying, so what does it show? So their conclusion was to conclude choline and beta -ene consumption lowers cancer incidence in this meta-analysis, but further studies are needed. That's what it always says. Now let's go to the who did this study. So this is the Chinese one. So this is the one out of Nanjing. So it's the oncology department, Oncology department. So these are researchers and doctors looking at this saying, what is the situation? Because of this first study is through a scare in everybody. So now let's go on to the next study. It says dietary choline and beta -ene intakes and risk of total and lethal prostate cancer. So they're trying to get very specific to refute the previous claim in atherosclerotic risk in communities. That's uh, arthritis. And so what they did, where is this from, from first? When was this done? This is 2019. The other was done in 2016. 2019, this is a number of universities. Johns Hopkins. This is University of Indiana. This is Johns Hopkins. Uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. This is Johns Hopkins. This is University of Minnesota. This is uh, Winston-Salem. Uh, Forest, uh, Wake Forest University. And the last is Johns Hopkins. So why did I say that? What is, you have a diversity of universities having to pull this research together. It's not one little department that can be controlled. So I look, when I look at studies, I try to see where's the bias? What are they looking at? So the first one is highly prejudicial. It's one department that puts out a lot of anti- animal, uh, nutrient-based animal protein, and et cetera. And they're very pro-plant, which actually is not a good source for choline, by the way, hence the, why they'd be willing to do that study. And then I look for 
you know, how many people worked on it? Where are these people from? How valid is it? And so what is their conclusion? To be very short about this, our results do not support the hypothesis that higher choline intake increases lethal prostate cancer risk, but do suggest that higher betaine, ene the metabolite of choline, that your body changes, intake may be associated with lower lethal prostate cancer risk. My gosh, that's absolutely the opposite. So there had to be, what, four or five different universities? You had North Carolina, you had Wake, you had University of Indiana, you had John Hopkins a number of times. Um, that is completely re refutes it. Now I want to go back and show you one that is about uh, cardiovascular. So this is 2017. This came out of actually uh, Chapel Hill, so Forest Wake University, University of North Carolina. And this is about really assessing the same kind of risk. Is it bad for cardiovascular? And basically says, our findings do not support an association between dietary choline betaine with incidence of cardiovascular disease. There you go. And it goes plenty of other uh, details there if you want to get into it. So for me, because uh, I'm going to do another video at much greater depth and actually recommending specifically in certain supplementations and certainly food for choline, it is the missing ingredient. We already know as a country, we are nutrient deprived from choline. We have lower than the required levels, and this is by the NIH, and that was from 2009 to 2012, so it's very recent. So we gotta deal with that because that directly affects our health, obviously, affects our ability to methylate, and I'm gonna go into that next time. Why do you need these things? Why is choline so important to you? So till then, this just was meant to be a shot in the arm, and hopefully coherent. I just wanna add, if these short, sweet topics are something that you're interested in and you want to see more videos just like them, certainly let me know, but also follow these videos. Bye-bye.